You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. And we're talking about dental implants today. And you could get a brand new set of teeth in just one day, according to my guest. Uh, with us, we have Dr. John Gilliland. Dr. Gilliland, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me on the show, Randy. Now, I know you brought some pictures of your yeah, patients, and correct. we'll talk about those in a moment. But for people that don't know your practice, because you do a lot of things there, uh, but who's the typical dental implant patient? So there's two primary categories of patients we see. We have those who have already lost all of the teeth. They're in a current denture. Um, and frankly, nobody's happy with a denture, so we, we see those patients a lot. Uh, the other category is patients who have, um, they're, if we were to predict their future, within yeah. five years, they're going into a denture. Um, and so they're, they're looking for options other than the thing that nobody wants to do, which is a denture. So you give these people what? Like upper and lower teeth that don't come out? That's correct. Is that like the newest trend in dentistry right now? Replacing teeth? It is. Teeth? It is. It, it's, uh, it's the most predictable option that patients have. Um, and it's the best option too. It, it's, it mimics teeth. It, it is teeth. Um, they're just attached to dental implants instead of roots. Now you've had your partner on the show. We, we've had him on the program, uh, Dr. Hadian. Yep. So he says he brought you in the practice also because of your expertise or background and training with implant dentistry. So how long have you been in and around implants? So it's been about 10 years now okay. um, that I've been working in some capacity in implant dentistry. Uh, and just over the years, you've been getting more and more into it, really digging into the digital side of things now, um, planning things from a digital perspective. What do you mean when you say digital? I mean that I can plan the entirety of your, all of your teeth relative to your face, um, the entirety of the surgery on the computer. Okay. Um, I can make it so that I don't need you in my office. If you come into my office and you need these procedures done, I take in some bits of information. I put you into the computer. Based on that information, I what, create like you have a special smile. imaging, like yeah. as far as going inside of their mouth. Correct. There's three different layers that I have. Okay. There's the bone. I take a CT. We have that in the office. We do an intraoral scan, which is a 3D scan of all the teeth. And then we do an extra oral facial scan. So all these bits of 3D information get all converged together. And so I have you in my office, even when you're not there. So you don't need to come back again and again well, and you're again. You're kind of like planning the surgery or planning the teeth or both? We reverse engineer everything from facial aesthetics to the teeth, back to where the implants need to go, then to the surgery. Okay. So what used to take is eight or nine months and oftentimes numerous offices. Um, it can all happen in one place, oftentimes in just a couple of days. Okay, now at your center, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. how dental implants are typically done is you go to, they're like done in two or three places. You go correct. to one doctor or, or a place that does the imaging, like the mm -hmm. CT scan, an, another doctor that does the surgery, and then another doctor that puts the teeth on top. You do all of those parts That's right correct. there. So is that why you're able to do it so fast because of the computer? Yes. These days? Yes, it happens a lot faster. Um, it can be more accurate as well. Now, as far as the look of the teeth, because I've looked at, and you brought photos, so I, yeah. I looked through those in the green room, and the teeth look natural. Yeah. How much is that in your hands? Who's designing the smiles? The patients are have the ultimate say. It's rare that I design a smile and a patient says, no, I don't like this. Now, okay. if they, let's say they want something a little bit off because their teeth looked a particular way back when they were 20, sometimes they'll bring me photos okay. and we'll design the smile based on that. And once again, I can do this all digitally. I, I can do it on the computer. I can show them what it looks like before the day of the surgery. And this is kind of like your goal is to all you do is to help people get their teeth back. That's correct. With, with dental implants. Are there a lot of people where you are that like are either headed to dentures? Because we said no more dentures right. at the top of the show. But are there that many people wearing dentures or headed to dentures where you are? Unfortunately, yeah. So there's uh, in our area, in the Lehigh Valley, there's a little less than a million people. Um, and it, it, the statistics vary based on what you see. I see anywhere from four to 10%. So based on that, let's say we have a million people and it's on the lower level of the data that I've seen, 4%, that's 40,000 people in our area who are currently wearing a denture. That's, that's huge. And, and if people know our area, they know the PPL center, that, that carries 8,500 people. So we could fill that up almost five times um, with the people who are currently in a denture. And that's not even including the people who are trending towards a denture, who within the next five years, they're really looking at the prospect of either a denture or other options, which are the ones that we provide. So if it's so good, 
right? Getting a new teeth supported by implants. Why aren't they all doing it? What's your take? You know, there's, I think there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, the biggest reason probably is that patients who have dentures, they really just don't know their options. They don't come into the dentist very often. They don't need to. Um, and frankly, lots of times when they get the denture, that's kind of the end for them. They're done with the pain. They're done with the bad breath. They're done with the, the bleeding gums, all these different, they're done seeing me um, or the dentist in general. And so for them, even though they're dealing with something that is far from optimal on a daily basis, it's almost done. And so they don't go back. They have no reason to, and they don't know their options. Now, another big category would be those fearful patients, right? They've had bad experiences in the office, and, and I get it. One thing that I would say to them is you come in, you're sedated, uh, you don't remember it, and pain is not something they complain about. Um, during the procedure or even after the procedure. I, I'm always amazed that even the next day after the procedure, um, I have some patients that say I have no pain. Now that's not everybody. Some yeah. people have variations, but it's the kind of thing that's managed with, with anti-inflammatory. Sometimes we'll give them a steroid um, and, and swelling stays relatively low. These are all possible issues that people can have. So why would an 85 year old want to do this? Well, especially if you're 85, you don't want a denture. I mean, this is a portion when you get into your life and you're supposed to be traveling. You're supposed to be spending time with family. Um, okay. All these Fair. different things. You don't want a denture falling out of your mouth when you're laughing. You don't like dentures. I hate dentures. And patients, I, I don't know a single patient who likes their denture. I know a couple dentures. They never complain. They don't I, com I told this to your partner. She's I like, know. They never say anything. I know. They, they never complain to you guys, but trust me. Uh, they they, they complain, complain to us. They hate them. Um, and they hide it. And that's one of the reasons most people around don't even know. Sometimes their spouses barely even know the struggle that they're dealing with. Um, but they're, you know, when they go to the restaurant, they have to choose items that are based on what can I, what can I chew with this thing inside of my, my mouth, this hockey puck um, that is acting as teeth. And it's really limiting the joy that they can experience with their family and friends. Look, if everybody who is wearing a denture right now in Pennsylvania, Lehigh Valley, wherever it was, doesn't matter, um, if they knew what they could get by teeth supported by implants, there would not be enough of me or enough dentists in general to take care of them. Just, uh, so it's that big of a deal. What, what do they like most, by the way? What they can eat or the way it looks? It depends on who it is. Um, you know, I'm a foodie. I love food. I was a, a chef in an ex-life. Okay. Um, and so for a lot of my patients, that's what we talk about. We talk about food. One thing about a denture is, uh, people don't realize this, but you have taste buds and salivary glands on the roof of your mouth. It t helps you taste food. Um, so right? when okay. you wear a denture, you don't taste the full range. It's kind of like tasting in black and white. Um, the, okay. the, uh, a lot of the flavors just don't show up. So when we get these teeth, people talk about having more vibrant because taste. the palate's no longer covered on the top. It's no longer covered. Okay. They, they, have, uh, they have more saliva that's covering the tongue, covering the roof of the mouth. Uh, and they actually taste more. So, uh, again, it's like tasting in black and white is, is the way that a lot of people explain it. Now, uh, insurance. Like, even the, right. the best dental insurance doesn't really cover dental implants. Unfortunately, no. Like, very, very small amount. And Medicare, Medicaid doesn't really cover it at all. Correct. But you say people are financing this. Yeah. All oh, the time. Absolutely. Um, one, one stat that I read recently was the number of people who are buying new cars each year. It's about 15 million in this country. The average car price is 40000 You don't hear a lot of people talking about, I can't afford a car. Why? Because 85% of pe people, they finance. And it's the same way in implant dentistry. Um, you need to be able to finance these things. You need to have a, a, an acceptable monthly payment so that you can actually afford this. And that's why so many people are affording it now and so many more people are getting it done because these options exist. So they're, they're worried about the money and they're worried about the pain. But now you guys are big on IV sedation. Right. How, what's that process like? Like you'd numb them up. I mean, tell me, tell me about what they could expect yeah. as far as maintaining, you know, not feeling anything. Right. So there's variations in sedation that we offer. Um, at, at the highest level, and the level that I'm most often working with because m these procedures are complex, is I bring in a CRNA. Uh, I have someone else. What is that? Like a it's a nurse anesthetist. So it's, it's someone who's like an anesthesiologist who comes and runs all that stuff for me. 
That way I don't have to think about it. Oh, All nice. I'm focusing on is the patient um, and they're watching vitals and managing the medications. Um, so, so, so what if, look, because you said like 85 year olds, 90 year olds, these are people that are statistically on like four or five or six medications. Right. Can they still get implants? Absolutely. Even though they're on these medications? Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's, there are contraindications that exist out there, but you'd be surprised how few people follow that category or follow those categories. But what if you've been wearing a denture for like 10, 15 years? Not enough bone to, to do this? Not, not necessarily the case. Okay. Uh, we hear this all the time because uh, there's a lot of offices that don't have the same technology that we have. Okay. And we can see where this bone is. Um, we have a lot of different options for where we place implants. Um, but I mean, here's a great example. I, I, I had a patient earlier this year. Uh, they had been in a denture for 30 years. They were fed up. Uh, they were dealing with sore spots, uh, a huge amount of adhesive that they had to use to just keep this thing in place. Uh, and we took a look at the, the CT scans and guess what? They had the bone where we needed so we could place enough implants so that we could give them new teeth. So now they can eat whatever they want. We give them upper and lower teeth and they eat practically like you and me. But what if you have like gum disease or bad gums? Will they support the implants? Oh yeah, absolutely. These are our patients. These are the people, people who are losing their teeth from gum disease. These are the people who need our help the most. When you take the teeth away, you take away the source of the infection. So that infection goes away, energy goes up. Um, well, there's a lot of studies out there that talk about uh, correlations between heart disease and these kinds of infections that we get. Because you have this infection. Infections. Correct. And your body has to deal and fight the infection. Correct. So when you get rid of it, do they have more energy, do they say? Uh, uh, these patients definitely have more energy. So I haven't seen any that don't. You brought some photos. What are we I, looking at? I did. Okay. So first patient here, I, I've become very close with her. Uh, she, so if you take a look here, she has numerous teeth uh, that are being affected by infection. Okay. okay. So these teeth are about to come out. They're, they're loose, bleeding gums. I don't know if she had bad breath or not, but typically that goes along with these sorts of things. Um, uh, failing root canals, failing crowns, one thing after the other. So she's coming in, she's exhausted, she's done with the process. Did they say, I don't want a denture? Oh, oh she said, absolutely not a denture. Okay. Um, and so that's why she came to see me. Uh, and so um, we worked her up, she has, she has the bone, she has everything we, we need. And this is her the day after surgery. This, isn't, <laughs> this is nice. And she was one of these patients who said she had no pain, and uh, which I, I still don't understand why it doesn't work she that way. She probably had some mild discomfort a little bit. She said that she didn't. Now, okay. most people do. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, she was very, very comfortable, and all she was doing was grinning ear to ear. Um, and she was one of these patients, too, that I just loved because in the office, she cried. Everybody else cried. My, my assistants were working. It was just... <laughs> it's good. It, it was a beautiful thing. And so, and she's just such a wonderful human to begin with. And so f to bring her from here to here, we were just all so proud to be a part of that process. Um, and now she's not dealing with the pain, infection, any of these things. And she has a beautiful smile. She looks younger. Okay. If yeah, you, I'd agree with that. And now at this point, she can eat literally whatever she wants. Um, there's, there's nothing holding her back. She's talked about eating salads, talked about eating ribs. Who eats, you know, you can't, certainly can't do that with a denture. Um, so nuts, nothing's off limits. I mean, whatever you can eat with regular teeth. Stay away from ice. Ice? <laughs> but okay. otherwise, but you could eat ice if you had to. <laughs> if you had to eat ice, you could eat ice. Okay. Um, but there's, uh, there's, there's no real restrictions after everything's healed. And now with this patient, mm -hmm. um, and I said this to your partner as well, if somebody is watching this, like, and then of course, if everything works out right, they have no teeth. They okay. can next week have upper and lower teeth, permanent teeth that don't come out. That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. So the time is really just kind of shortened up. It's been very condensed. So, um, you know, we, we do the surgery, you get the teeth the same day. Uh, those aren't the final teeth, those are the temporary, but look how beautiful those temporaries are. They look good. It looks, I mean, I, I think it just looks wonderful. You're a dentist, by the way. You I, probably think the smile is the most important thing. How important <laughs> is it as you see it? You know, the thing is, that's what everybody thinks. They think, oh, the dentist, the, the smile is the most important thing. Yeah, the ophthalmologist, yeah. the eye is the mo most important thing. Um, but, uh, I mean, don't listen to me. T take a look at the rest of the world, right? 
there's been numerous surveys done on this where when you ask somebody, what is the most important thing about when you meet somebody, what is the thing that you notice first? It's always the eyes or the smile. Okay, okay? good point. So yes. it's not me. Everybody else is saying it's a smile. Um, you know, unfortunately, we live in a world where people get unfairly judged based on um, not only the, the smile, the actual physical action of pulling the cheeks up and smiling, but also the way that their teeth look. Uh, and you can see this, let's say you go on an interview, um, and let's say you don't even have good teeth, and you take that same person, maybe a twin, and uh, one smiles, one has charisma because of the smile, it might not even be a, a beautiful smile. Guess who's getting the job? The one that smiles. It's the one who smiles. It's not necessarily higher the one with a better smile, but if one is smiling and has charisma, Correct. seems optimistic. Right. Good point. Yeah, nice. And one thing that I think a lot of people don't think about too is how does that smile affect you and how does it affect other people? So there's what also, do you mean? So there's been studies done where if you smile and you're not even happy, it feeds into that process of, of having a higher sense of well-being. Okay. So you feel happier when you smile. When you have bad teeth, uh, when you have that low confidence, you hold that in, um, and, and it's a shame. But the other thing is, too, this, I've been thinking a lot about this idea of infectious positivity. You, and and every, all of us have met these people who they smile, and that feeds into you. You feel that warmth. That's good. And so when we have people like this, this joy is being transmitted to other people around her. Uh, her husband, I'm sure, is happier. Her kids are probably happier. Um, so it's not just about her. It's also her joy ex being extended to other people. So uh, that's, that's her story. That's not my story. Um, now, you know, and we talked about this briefly, like in, in Hollywood, like in movies. If you yeah. want to make somebody look poor or a street person, you yeah. give them bad teeth. Yeah. They even have dentists that make fake clip-on bad teeth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very unfair, but that's the world that we live in is, is people, unfortunately, are judged. And you see, you see that exactly in Hollywood. Um, you want to you make somebody look like a bad person, give them bad teeth. That's not the case, obviously. Um, and you say a lot of these people are brushing and flossing, yeah. but they have a bacterial infection that they can't get rid of. Yeah, and that's why they're losing their teeth. You know, one, one thing that I'd love to stress for these people is it's not their fault. Okay. okay. There's so many things that lead into this process. Sometimes it's, it's bad genes. Um, sometimes it's they, they had a, a really traumatic experience in life and they didn't take care of things for a short period of time. And these problems compounded over the years. They got worse and worse. Sometimes they had bad dentistry. There's a lot of different reasons that they ended up in this position, but it's not necessarily their fault, and they should never be judged on it. Um, but luckily, we have great options for them to get what, get back what they lost. I know we weren't going to talk really about finances, but you are substantially less than the so-called leaders in this implant dentistry. That's correct. You're 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 a lot less. That's correct. And and the prices have kind of come down a little bit from they when have. you first started doing this. That's correct. Um, a lot of things has ha have happened. Uh, number one, since we have everything on site uh, and we do everything in one site, um, it, it's obviously less expensive when you do it like this. Uh, fewer appointments. If I can do something in two appointments that I used to do in 10, we don't spend as much time with you. All right, let me show you this next patient. All right. So uh, her situation was a little bit different. She was in a flipper. I don't know if you know much about a flipper, but a flipper. Not really. <sighs> It's uh, it's a temporary denture, um, and they don't work well. They're like barely it flips aesthetic. in and flips out. Flips in, flips okay. out. Uh, and she was told for, by numerous other dentists that she couldn't have implants because she lost this bone in the front. So lots of times you hear that. If somebody loses a lot of bone, they can't have implants. Well, when we took a look at the CT, sure enough, she has plenty of bone. Maybe not right in the front, but that's okay. Okay. Um, and so we were able to, once again, provide her with, with a brand new set of teeth up top. And this is what she looks like now. Look how much younger she looks. Yes. Very and nice. And look how much happier she looks. Too. She does. So. And so she can eat whatever. She can eat whatever she wants with those. Absolutely. Like chewing and things. Her husband or... is coming in next. Her husband has, has had some dental problems too. And, and, uh, so, and that's really honestly where we get a lot of our patients. And maintaining these things, uh, you know, once they're all healed up, like, Every six months, every year, how does that work? So it is every six months. Okay. Um, and uh, they're, they're very, very cleansable. The material that we use is, is called zirconia. It's about three times as strong as your natural teeth, um, but also it doesn't collect plaque and bacteria the same way that, the, that your teeth do. So it actually stays cleaner easier. That's it. It has. It doesn't to be, really stain. Is that true? It, it doesn't stain at all. So like coffee no. stains or wine stains. Nothing like. So you don't have no. to brush your teeth. 
Well, you have to still I'm brush kidding, your teeth. I'm kidding, but the truth is they stay white and clean looking. They do. Kind of like correct. veneers. Correct. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, I know you brought more photos. I don't want to rush you here. Okay. Um, so this is another one who's become a, a close friend of mine okay. uh, since we started working with her. She's also a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, and this is a patient who would have been in a denture. Um, and she, her daughter was getting married and she needed something to happen fast. And when she came to us, sure enough, she had something fast and it's beautiful. Um, she can eat the food that she wants. So her daughter's getting married. She wants a smile in the photos. Is that? Yes, that's correct. What's going yeah. on? Okay. Yeah. It's very nice. Do you ever feel like you're driving home after a successful day and you go, you know, if I didn't meet that patient, they would have been in a denture and then lost in the system because you say denture wearers don't go back to the dentist anymore. Yeah, I, I Do you think, ever feel that way? I think about it every single day. There's so many people who are missing out on this. Um, and, and it's like I said before, it's not teeth. It's not necessarily the smile. It's the way that you feel. Um, and I was thinking about this yesterday too. You see all these commercials on TV where uh, you have these people who have these big smiles. You don't even know what the, the product is that they're selling. Um, and at the end, who knows what it is, the, th the thing that they're selling, but you, everybody is looking youthful, big smiles. Yeah. Well, that's actually what we provide. So okay. that, that is the product. Um, it's the joy that goes along with it. And so um, I would love to, to help these people out every single day. Now, now, when you, and I'm paraphrasing you, but it's like yeah. you say they come back in six months or eight months and they're unrecognizable. That means they're acting right. differently, sometimes dressing differently. Your assistant oh, yeah. has to say, do you oh, know yeah. who that is? Yeah, yeah. I, I, one of uh, a gentleman who, uh, he's a relatively young guy, he's in his 50s. Um, I'm Facebook friends with him. And ever since he had this done, selfies all the time. You should see the clothes <laughs> that he wears. It's all over the top stuff. Uh, okay. he, he dresses way better than me, way better than Dr. Haiti. And he, he, he dresses well. But um, this guy, uh, he, he's a different person. And this is what you see again and again. Uh, people's attitudes change. Another gentleman, um, he, uh, he'd been around uh, from dentist to dentist, and really he wasn't the one who was trying to get in. His wife was trying to get him in. When he came to me, he could not look me in the eye. I couldn't get two words out of him. Uh, and he decides to go ahead and go forward with him. We gave him new teeth, top and bottom. He is a different person. He, he obviously looks completely different because what he had is, he, he, he was on a medication that made it so that he, it was a lot easier to get cavities. And so he had cavities all over the place. He had the bad breath, the pain, uh, the going to the dentist again and again and again. And so we got him out of all that pain and we gave him these new teeth and his confidence level just shot through the roof. Um, he, uh, he, he got a promotion, a pretty big one. So he was a father of four okay. and he's the primary breadwinner in the family. His ability to produce was greatly decreased by, meaning produce an income, is greatly decreased by the lack of charisma, um, the lack of confidence, the I lack guess. of confidence. Yeah. And when he gets that back, all of a sudden he's the regional manager for the company that he's working That's for. That's nice. It took a couple months to get so it's there, more than but... just teeth. Oh, so That's much how you more. feel about yourself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because absolutely. confidence is attractive. It is. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it, like we said, it, it, it ignites romance. You know, there's, there's a lot that people are missing out on that they don't maybe remember that they're missing out on it because it's been so long. When you say they have to learn to smile all over again, what do you mean when yeah. you say that? Yeah. So everybody wearing masks over the last couple of years, uh, a lot of people have appreciated this because they haven't had to smile. Um, they haven't had to show their teeth. Now, when you smile, there's muscles obviously that are involved in the process. These muscles become dormant over time if you never smile. So it takes people a little while. If they haven't done it for a long time. They're, they're, they're in the habit of like right. smiling with their mouth closed or something? Correct. Or just a little bit of a grimace to their face. Okay. Um, and so it's, but it's not a real smile. Then they get this and you do see those muscles pulling back, but it takes a couple months until you see that big, full, beautiful smile sometimes. Then you're doing selfies on Instagram and oh, Facebook yeah. and then you're getting defriended because you're the selfie guy. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? So husbands and wives are doing this, partners are doing this. Yes. Who yeah. goes in first? I guess the men put this off the most, right? They we do. wait until we, we're in so much pain, right. then we go to the dentist. Yeah, and we see it all the time. They're always the ones who are really stoic. Uh, everything's fine, everything's fine. The wife pushes them in. Um, and I'd say to them, the, quit waiting. What are you waiting for? I mean, you don't have to beat yourself up and, and live like that. You can, you can have 
good things too. Is this true that most of the people that get this done, like have literally hated their teeth for like 20, 30 most years? Most of them have. Most of them have. And they've been hating dentists at the same time. They've been hating going in. They've been hating uh, things fail one thing after the other, the expense of it all. Um, and so that's, that's sometimes, you know, sometimes people think this is expensive, but it's not nearly as expensive as what they've already been through. Um, so it's... Did, did they ever come in telling you how much money they've spent on their teeth over the years? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. We hear I've it spent all the time. this amount. I've spent that yeah. amount. Yeah. And, and none of it worked. And then they do, they do this, and this is... Um, nothing's permanent in life, but it's as permanent as it gets. And it doesn't matter how old, 80s, 90s. 80s, 90s. And I guess younger and younger people are coming in as well that maybe had, you know, taking medications or things that were drying out their mouths. Correct. They lose their teeth. Yes, yeah. So we're, we're seeing the, the full gamut from patients in their 20s sometimes uh, all the way up into, you know, for me, 80s. Um, but uh, I've, I've spoken to some people who have treated patients well into their 90s. So no more dentures. No more dentures. You think you can wipe them out? <laughs> Where you I'm are. hoping. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if everybody, fa like if there was a try-in period, like let's say you talk to all the denture, and I know you right. can't do this, but like, hey, try in upper and lower teeth that don't come out that are fixed in your mouth over the weekend. Nobody could go back? Nobody would go back. There's no way. <laughs> Does everybody Absolutely. say like, they, you say they have regrets. Like, why did I do this earlier? Yeah, that's, that's the biggest regret that we hear. Certainly. Why didn't I do this earlier? Why did I put this off? You know, and, and lots of times it's because they didn't know it was there, but um, there's some that did know that it was there and waited longer, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's a primary regret. We're completely out of time. So final message, somebody watching this, they've heard what you have to say. Yeah. Maybe they have the bleeding gums, the bad breath, the loose teeth. They're headed for a denture or they're wearing dentures. They've heard what you had to say, but for whatever reason, they're still skeptical. Yeah. Come What in. do you say? I'd say come and have a conversation. Um, we consultation is free the CT is free there's no risk of coming in and at least exploring your options um, take a look at some of the photos our before and after photos uh, talk to some of our patients who have had it done really okay yeah, absolutely do they get to meet with you or dr. Hadian either um, one right uh, either one um, sometimes usually both of us actually I want to thank you for coming to the show good stuff thank you so much for having me you've been watching the wellness hour news that makes you healthier I'm Randy Alvarez for now I wish you could help Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.